I'm Cherokee Ronnie and this is Jeep Stuff Talk Show. So today we're going to be talking about some things that's new on the market and then we're going to be talking about a the new Jeep truck and then at last we're going to be talking about your Jeep overheating and people blow this out of proportion. People are mechanics, people aren't mechanics, people are YouTube mechanics, people are backyard mechanics, and they all have their opinion, but I'm gonna tell you my experience. So stick around, and we're gonna get right into it. So the first thing <clears throat> that we're gonna be talking about today is the new Jeep Wrangler truck. Now this truck is really long. Um, this truck is a Wrangler with a bed, pretty much. It's just a Wrangler with an extended bed. Um, in my case, or in my way, what I think about it is, it's not something you're going to wheel with. It's something that you're going to take camping, haul your dirt bikes in, your four wheeler, and stuff like that. Um, they sh in the commercial they show it haul on a boat. So let's let's just go ahead and get right into it and take a look at this thing and see what is in store. And a black or body style three piece hardtop with a manual sliding rear window and removable roof panels. It, it looks pretty good Inside, so far. If you've seen the Wrangler, the Gladiator will be familiar. The dashboard and center stack you can are identical. Watch the whole video where they went over the rocks and stuff with it. They climbed little rocks and logs with it on there. You can check There's out that video on their, here. on their channel. Dividers. Same thing I know this, this truck is going to have a lot of storage too. Flip. Cargo. You can take these. Let's skip forward here. They're going to have a lot of storage in this truck under the seats, which every Fiat Chrysler product has storage. Even my Ram has plenty of storage in it. And then when. Like I said, you can go watch the whole video. If you skip to the ad part, it says, we can just listen here, it tells you what kind of motor it's gonna have in it. Gladiator's lone engine will be a 3.6 liter V6 featuring engine start-stop technology, and it'll come teamed with either a six-speed manual transmission or an eight-speed automatic. Wait until 2020 and you can choose a three liter diesel engine paired exclusively with an eight-speed automatic. And that's the best part. If you wait for this thing in the future, it's gonna have a diesel in it. And a lot of small vehicle, uh, like the little trucks are starting to do that. And which I think is really cool because I just love diesel. I like little diesels. I always love the Volkswagens. And I think it's cool that they're going to start doing that for Jeep. I think they should put them in the Wranglers also, put diesels in the Wrangler. Because I think that will change the game on how you will. Because if you get on YouTube, you can see several people doing diesel swaps um, to Wranglers. They're doing... LS swaps, but I always wanted to do a diesel swap. I even wanted to do a 12 valve into a Cherokee one time, but that's a lot of money to invest in a Cherokee um, because the Cherokees that you buy around here are pretty much already done for. Um, so you really have to find one that's in perfect shape. And there was a guy, there was a subscriber that actually sent me an email and he bought this Cherokee new and this thing was mint. I didn't have the money at the time to buy it. He was asking a really good sale price for it, but this thing was mint perfect it had no rust he said i could have it for a deal and it was a steal but i just didn't have the money at the time to buy it but i think the truck is it's going to it's it's new to the game um, i think a lot of people are waiting for that because they heard rumors about it a couple years ago and i've heard rumors about it and people were excited and they didn't know if it was just a rumor or it came true or it's going to come true and it finally came true they finally released it so it's going to be it's going to be a game changer that's for sure um you could i would i would think you could pull you could pull a, a wrangler that you had or a cherokee that you have uh, i mean that you have or, or um maybe atvs with a trailer with this thing because it shows hauling a boat and a boat's pretty heavy um so i don't see why you couldn't get a good bounce trailer and haul your cherokee to the trail or haul your Wrangler to the trail with this truck. Uh, I don't see that would be, a, you know, why would that be a problem? Um, because my Ram, it's only a 1500 and I, I haul a trailer. I've held, hauled a car trailer and the, the car trailer was well balanced and it didn't really strain the truck because all the weight's on the trailer. So it's all about the trailer that you used to and how it was built and where's all the weight. Is it on the tongue? Is it on the axles? So that's the stuff that you have to factor in when you're hauling with something smaller um, like a, a like a Wrangler or you know a small truck or something like that. So make sure you keep that in mind. I th I would I would haul you know my trail rig Cherokee with this Wrangler. That that would be a nice show truck to 
deck out also, and then haul your rig with. So I I I expect a lot of people are going to wheel this thing. I just I can't wait till people get their hands on them and start modding them like the Wranglers because. I'm in the 304 Jeep Club, and I've been to their parades, I've been to their meetups, and I've been to their uh, events, and they they take these Wranglers, man, and they put money in them, and they use them. It's just, it's just not a show. They actually use these Wranglers. It's really shocked me. The money that they have in these Wranglers, they just use them and abuse them, just like we do the Cherokees. All right. <clears throat> now we got that out of the way. Um, I don't know the price on these yet. I say they're going to be pretty high. You're not going to be able to get a cheap one. So let's uh, let's go ahead and check out Rough Country's new shocks. These have been out for a little bit, the Vertex and all that stuff. But um, they come out with new shocks that are heavy duty, have bigger cores, and they have bigger stuff. So let's just watch the video and uh, see what Rough Country has to say about these shocks. Your piston, a chrome hardened 18 millimeter piston rod, 54 millimeter shock body to help dissipate heat. All of this gives this a 36 kilonewton tensile strength. It comes with a spring-loaded seal to they look pretty nice too. They look well built. I mean, the mass on those things, and these are going to cost you a little bit. But it, it comes in a metallic silver finish. If they the do what they say they do, they would be worth the investment. Next They're going to be cheaper the than higher-end brand stuff. These are going to be bolt-on. Uh, they are application not be specific. Cheap. They come with velocity sensing valving. Use an OEM coil. You're going to add yeah, your factory really, really coil good. to this. Unfortunately, look really, really you can't good. just buy the six-inch lifted. Now let's take a look at what everybody's been checking Check out, out the whole ones. time. The big boys, the Rough Country Vertex Reservoir Shock. These are going to come with an eight-stage adjustable dampening. These are the ones I've been waiting for. Anyway. All of them are, it is a mono them are sweet. design with remote reservoir, a massive two-and-a-half-inch piston, a 22-inch piston wow. rod. These are tuned specific for each That's application. Awesome. They, they even had the Come strut version too. Let's get to that. Coilover reservoir. It takes all the aspects of the shock and adds to it a vehicle specific coil. It's going to also have your steel braided line. That's pretty You've sweet. Got your it's pretty sweet that they come out with something like that for, the, uh, for everybody. Um, it looks like they, they made a shock for everybody. They made a shock for every terrain or what you're going to do. Um, because these are not little shocks. Uh, they look little on the video, but they're not little shocks. They are big shocks. They are made to handle some serious off-roading. And if they stand behind that three-year warranty that he's talking about, I know their warranty is sketchy, but I heard I heard they've been improving on their warranty game and their customer customer service. But if they if they if these are what they say they are and they stand behind their warranty, these would be a great buy if you're if you're a serious off-roader uh, because these look pretty good. The, for once, Rough Country have made something that's big um, because the problem with Rough Country is you can buy a spacer lift for like a truck or you know whatever it takes a spacer. I think uh, uh, like Liberties take spacer lifts and stuff. You can buy their spacer lifts and get them and they're real thin. They look chintzy, right? And then you can buy a different brand, and, and they're the same size, but they're thicker and bigger. Um, they're just built, the other company, I'm not saying any names, the other company is built bigger than this company. So they're starting to step their game up, because I think that's the problem with their quality. Um, here's the thing, when you buy a cheap lift kit, you get what you pay for. It's going, they're, they're, going to, they're going to slack on the quality a little bit, but they're still going to brag up their 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 stuff because that's their company right so a lot of people's had success with rough country lift kits you guys know on this channel that i have not I, because i'm just i'm an abuser I, I abuse my vehicle and it just couldn't stand up to it it just that's the truth it couldn't stand up to it and, and then the front leaves or the front springs they just kind of after a while they'll sag and then they'll start rusting and in my in my opinion, it the much money you're spending for this cheap lift kit, and you put it on, and two or three years down the road that it's going to sink, um, it's going to go flat. And what I mean by that is it's it's going to settle real bad. The rear is going to settle real bad, and uh, you're going to have to spend money again to fix this. So it's better off just to save double the money and buy a real lift kit that has a great warranty, 
and has great quality. Nothing against Rough Country. I love Rough Country. There's nothing wrong with Rough Country. I still use their stuff. I still like the products that they put out. Uh, they do sell higher end lift kits too. So that's another option. You can go to their website, look at their higher end lift kits and everything. But their basic lift kits, their low end lift kits, if you're just driving around town wanting your Jeep to look good and you're really not an off-roader and you just do mild wheeling and maybe go to your cabin on the weekend or uh, go hunting every year, this lift kit's for you. There's nothing wrong with these lift kits. But when it comes to bashing on them, banging on them, um, th they don't really last that long. Now, they might have changed their quality up a little bit but you guys know that I like zone off-road and BDS and if you can't afford BDS go with zone so uh, that is that's just my opinion go check out their shocks they have decent prices on them for what they are you can't beat them and um, I just can't get over the quality of them they, they look really really good for I, I don't want to sound mean or ignorant but they look really good for rough country it looks like something I would buy and be happy with so you know what? Give thumbs up for Rough Country doing something new um, and, and stepping up their game a little bit. So we're going to get into talking about your Jeep overheating, right? <clears throat> because that's like my number one comment, you know? I get, you know, why is my Jeep overheating? Why is it doing this? You're a liar. It's supposed to stay at 210. Oh, it runs a little hot. The other guy says, no, it shouldn't reach 210. Oh, it shouldn't do this. I mean, there's so much confusion out there. And people believe the nonsense that they hear and read because people get on Google and they take everybody's advice and they act like they know what they're talking about. I have experienced this with several Jeeps. I've owned several Jeeps. I've owned one, two, three, four. I, have five, I had five Jeeps and they all were different animals and they all had different maintenance. All right. And pretty much every one of them I had to put a new radiator on. Um, and I flushed the system and made sure all the system was clean and all that stuff, right? So every Jeep that I had ran at 210, except the last build I did had the dirt bound off road bumper, the one I put the locker in, that one run cooler because I set that Jeep up to run cooler. But at a stock standpoint, all my other Jeeps before I did anything to them, they ran at 210. Normally when you're driving and setting at a little town, they would run at 210. Now, if I'm going uptown, like, you know, Motown here in West Virginia, if you go up there on a hot day, because we get hot summers in West Virginia, you're talking like 90 to 95 degrees, okay? And uh, that's here lately anyway. And if you're going to go up and set up town in traffic and you're inching forward every 10 minutes, your needle is going to move just a little bit. That's just the reality of it. And uh, people's like, oh, no, your Jeep's going to blow up. It's going to blow the head gasket. I hear so much stupid stuff like that. Trust me, you're not going to blow the head gasket. Because I had a Jeep Grand Cherokee. Well, that makes six Jeeps I had then. I had a Jeep Grand Cherokee. I got stuck in the woods. And I couldn't get nobody to help me that day to get it out. So I tried to get it out myself. And believe it or not, I ran this Cherokee so hard, drive to reverse, drive to reverse, that it overheated, it pegged on the heat gauge and locked up. It would not start. I'd let it cool down, I would start it up again and do the same thing. I couldn't get it out. So we waited till the next day. I got a guy with a Chevy truck with log chains to come get this thing out of the woods, right? He got it out of the woods, I turned the key, it started right up. And that, I never blew the head gasket on. Now I'm not saying overheat your Jeep, but I've never blowed the head gasket. That Jeep still runs today, perfectly fine. You can run down the road and drive it to town. There's nothing wrong with that Jeep. So a, a straight six is tough. They're really tough motors. And people treat them like they're a junkie motor. They're really, really tough motors. And when the peg moves just a little bit, you know, it's not gonna, you're not gonna, it's not gonna blow up. Now when it's, if you're sitting in traffic and it really starts going up, then there's something wrong with your cooling system and you need to check it out. You need to make sure your fan's working and all that stuff. And I have videos on that. You can go through my channel and watch. So, you got to use common sense when you're when you're setting steel a fan can only move so much air especially a clutch fan because when you're setting steel and when you're moving that clutch fan is going one speed that clutch fan don't go any faster so it relies on this fan to kick on and off so it can only move so much air when you're setting in traffic and the way a Cherokee is designed we all know it's like a square and it can only move so much air there's only one place that air can go when you're sitting in traffic if you if you have I'm talking from a stock vehicle a stock Cherokee there's only one place that air can go 
out of the seams of the hood and down, okay? And that's rough because there's a lot of heat on the driver's side of Cherokees. So don't freak out when it just moves a little bit. If it moves a little bit, don't listen to everybody else. You're fine. It, you're perfectly fine. When you start moving, it'll go back down just a hair. Now, another thing you got to take in is consideration is a me mechanical gauge is not dead on accurate. I don't care what people say. They're not dead on. They're really, really close, but they're not dead on. Always keep that in mind. Um, now, if you have dummy lights, and that might be a problem because... I had a Jeep with dummy lights and I knew my Jeep was getting warm, but it never let me know until it was t like chattering. So if you have dummy, dummy lights and you feel your Jeep's getting hot, you need to check into that and make sure it's not overheating because my light would not kick on until my Jeep was pretty much baking itself and I didn't even know it. So just to throw this out the window th when you hear everybody say oh it has to be perfect on 210 or it's supposed to run below 210 you need to take in consideration the thermostats they're using also because people use different thermostats i always run uh, i forget i forget what thermostat i always ran uh it's the recommended one um, but the build that i did before i would run it without a thermostat or i'd get it really low i'd open at really low temperatures and then I had hood vents, and you know what? That Jeep run cool. And you can do that stuff to your Jeep if you want. But from a stock standpoint, you're fine. Just trust me, you're fine. I've had plenty of them from experience. I didn't get on Google and Google this before I made this video. I learned from experience what to do. Um, don't get the stupid hood spacers that lift your hood up in the back. That's stupid. Um, you can upgrade your cooling power. You can change the, the, the clutch fan. Um, you can get you can get a radiator kit now they have i think it has dual electric fans and it's a, a bigger radiator you can buy that i think don't quote me for 200 bucks and you can slip that in goes right into the stock mounts you don't have to do no funny modifications hillbilly backyard stuff you can just set the radiator down there wire the fans in comes with relays and everything and that right there will keep your jeep a lot cooler than the stock setup because the, 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 I believe the Foro was not designed to go in the Cherokee. I believe that. And I can't confirm it, but I think somebody else confirmed it. But they came out with the V6s in them. And, and they were junk, dude. And then they shoved the straight six in there. And you can tell that the motor was shoved in there. I don't care what people say. You can tell the Foro was shoved in a Cherokee. And people's like, you can lift the hood and see down both sides. I'm not talking about both sides. I'm talking about a straight six motor here. Okay, yeah, you can see down both sides. It's, yeah, it's common sense. I'm talking about this way. And when you shove that down in there and you make a square and then you shove a small radiator in front of that and put a bunch of junk in front of the radiator and then shut the hood, that, that's, that's a lot of heat in that little area. Stuff, people blow stuff out of proportion. They get on my channel, they comment like, ah, this guy's an idiot, he don't know what he's doing. Um, if, you, if you're watching my older videos, you know, that's when I had low quality stuff, I was kind of nervous anyway, but the newer videos, I know what I'm doing, I've already been experienced. I know a lot about Jeep Cherokees, and I've never had a problem with most people coming to me and getting advice, and they take my advice and use it, and they say, man, okay, you know what you're talking about. I have a lot of people sometimes call me, they used to call me and ask me this, this, what, this, 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 because I've already experienced, I've, I've been, all over a Cherokee, even cutting the top off of one. I've been all over, changing clutches, changing uh, spider gears, changing rear ends, changing front ends. Change, I mean, I've already been all over a Cherokee. The only thing that I've never done is split a transfer case on a Cherokee. That's one thing I've never done. I put the seals in, I put the bearings in. I've had all the experience. I've rebuilt one. So from I mean, from, I've, I've, I've put doors off different models on other doors. I've even had that documented about how this, this one won't fit on this one unless you change this. So I've already been all over a Cherokee with a knife and comb and a mirror and everything to really get hands-on experience so I could spread it to you guys. So I don't understand why people get mad when I'm just trying to help them or spread my experience. I'm trying to get along here with everybody. I'm trying to be in the Jeep community. And one thing I've learned about the YouTube community with Jeepers, they don't want nothing to do with you. Um, they're right, you're wrong. That's because your channel's bigger and you got sponsors. 
Um, we don't want to talk to you because you do stuff in your backyard, but that's where everybody starts. And you know, I started, I started to get sponsors and stuff and I started to do this, but I guess you could call me a black sheep because I don't want to be told what to do. Um, I just want to do what I want to do on my channel. That's the whole reason. And I get, I do get paid from YouTube a little bit. It's not like I'm a millionaire. I can go out and buy all these Jeeps and it does help if you have sponsors and, uh, and people's like, all oh, your channels dying and all this stuff. Okay, <laughs> people want to, I don't understand this. People want to see the same thing over and over and over again. Like they want to see me buy another Cherokee and do the same exact thing. Like I, I even showed people how to get a lift kit for $250. And they're like, can you get any cheaper? Like if you want to get any cheaper than that, I went and drive the Jeep down the road. So I don't understand what you guys want. I mean, I'm, I'm respecting your side because you want to see content. You want to see you guys really didn't want to see trail rides because I have um, long videos, really good trail rides, and they only got a couple thousand views. Uh, but when it comes to working on stuff, you guys love that stuff. But there's only so much that you can do to a Cherokee. And when you buy a Grand Cherokee, it's the same thing as a Cherokee. So I don't understand what you guys want to see more content of me doing stuff over again. Uh, I pretty much built a street off-road rig. Um, I, I, I've done all this stuff, and the only thing that I can't build is stuff like bleep and jeep and build. You know, I can't build stuff like that. I, I got a house and stuff to pay for. I don't have a garage. I can't build rock crawlers and stuff. I can't do that kind of stuff. But I can do what a normal person could do, and that was the whole goal of this channel. The whole goal of this, of this channel was to show you guys that you can change the stuff in your backyard because it's ridiculous what garages charge you to change a pinion seal. It's ridiculous to... Uh, what a, a garage charges to put lift kits on. I wanted to show you, you guys can have barely little tools and do this in your backyard. And that's the whole reason why my videos are so raw and so camera shaky and wind blowing. Because I wanted you guys to see the realness of life through a screen. Because the problem with YouTube is it's not real life. Okay. Um, you say, well, yeah, that's some, somebody's real life. You know, they record. It's not real life. They cut the videos up so bad they don't they don't really tell you that they went through this problem. Uh, they went through this to put this on. You've seen the raw footage of me taking the springs off my Jeep and what I had to do. Cut the bolt, pound it through. That was the reality because I got so sucked into the YouTube reality. That's what I call it, reality shows. That when I begin to put a lift kit on my Jeep, I thought I was never going to have any problems. This guy did it this way. It's going to work this way. You got to use an impact. It's going to come right out. And it doesn't work that way. When you use an impact on on uh, your leaf springs, it could bust the weld on the inside. and and spins. If you use a, uh, a, uh, a breaker bar, it can do the same thing. So you're screwed either way. So just be prepared. Uh, when you watch a YouTube video, be prepared to run into problems. I've even seen simple videos like spark plug changing and stuff, how simple it was, and I've run into problems before. Like, so be prepared. Anything you do on a Cherokee, because these these are old vehicles, be prepared to run into problems. And that's why my videos are so raw, and that's why I'm so honest. That's why I'm so straightforward. And a lot of people don't don't like that. Um, a lot of people complain about the quality. I can't hear you. You know, I want it to be close as reality as possible. And I do have a mic now and it does make things a little bit better. But I want to be to, you know, closest to real life on a screen that you can get. Um, because I want you guys to feel like I, um, you, you know me and I know you. If you don't like it, that's fine. Uh, I'm, I'm doing this talk show now because it's winter. I'm going to continue to do this talk show because my other channel, Ronald Jr., that's all about guitars. That's what I've been focused on right now because that's, that's my main hobby right now. But I'm doing talk shows now because it's cool, it's fun, and it's we can relate. And once they start getting a lot of views, we're going to start doing them live. And that way we can interact with you guys and you guys can ask questions. And uh, we're, we, we can even have people over uh, from clubs. Uh, um, mechanics and stuff like that so if that's something you guys are into if you like this kind of stuff if you like this talk show please give it a thumbs up this is just a rough start it wasn't really anything fancy but uh, give it a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed yet hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell so you know each and every time I upload a video and then uh, share this video to all your Jeep friends and Jeep clubs and stuff like that I don't care about the hate that I get. I, I, I scroll through the comments. If I see ones, I say something stupid on there or I want to be like you, or you're cool. And then I go to the comments that people 
want to know something. I can't answer every comment. I do apologize. I can't answer every email. Um, it's hard to answer everybody's question at one time. So if I don't get to you, I will get to you soon. Um, but I just want to let you guys know that I appreciate everything that you guys do. I appreciate you guys watching my um, YouTube. I appreciate all of that. So uh, I hope you guys like this. And uh, God bless you guys. And I hope you guys have a great Saturday. And I'll see you guys next Saturday for the episode two of this talk show. <laughs>